So Noel, earlier you brought up um, something that we do as an IT department is to try to try and like minimize the impact it has on users. And one of the things that you didn't quite mention, but you sort of hinted around, is that we kind of are personalize the messaging that goes out to individual departments and regions, right? We have uh, where it comes from a person and not just the regular IT department, right? It comes Correct. from someone you're more likely to know, like someone from the Austin office is gonna email the Austin office Correct. to say you need to do something. Yeah, and, and sometimes that's not good enough just to send out a blanket email to the whole company, and that's why we want to personalize um, those communications. And we even go a step further, um, creating actually meeting invites in Microsoft Teams to let people know or different units know exactly what's going on, if they have any questions or answers regarding the new technology changes. Um, for example, if we are limiting USB ports for people to plug in their USB drives, um, there should be a conversation about it, a live conversation. Um, email is just not good enough. Yeah, we have to do that to cover our basis. Hey, we did communicate it, but we take a, a, um, a further step to actually meet with the business users, meet with the geographies, um, and with everybody who's being impacted with that. It's, you know, you, you layer the communications just like you layer security or even operations, yeah. right? You have those fallback plans and yeah. those layers of it. And we'll have silly campaigns, right? We'll have posters up. There's, you know, post, um, we have digital signage all over SolarWinds that we post advertisement up. We might express it during um, all hand meetings or even meetings that's not even related to what we're rolling out um, just to get the word out. And it's, it's more stickier than just sending a, a, just a generic email. It's not generic, but a targeted email. Yeah, that's just from the IT department. Yeah, right the there. IT department, I, we're I, going I to take everything that. away. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, I think that what it does is it really humanizes right. IT, especially for other departments. Like within IT, you know, you know the guy working next to you and they can just, you know, lean over the cube yeah. and tell you you need to go implement this thing or whatever. But like a lot of other departments are affected. I mean, we've got sales and finance and HR mm -hmm. and uh, marketing and all kinds of other things at a company this size. And even at a smaller company, even if you're a one man IT person, you still have other other people that are relying on you and that use the technology in your company. Right. So humanizing it in any way is the smart way to go because especially if they're in a non-technical role, right. they want to talk to a human being and not a faceless void. Yeah, yeah. So I see a lot of larger, not so much smaller organizations, but larger organizations really behind, behind that brand IT, mm -hmm. but never put themselves out. Hey, this is the person who designed the solution. This, this is the person who's implemented the solution. If you have any questions, you have any issues, come to us directly, right? So we tried to personalize it, like you said, and put a face to who IT is, so it's less scary. So I know for a lot of people in IT, you, the personalities that are there a lot of times are more introverted or they just wanna you know, head down, get their job done and get out for the day. And so it can be a big leap to make yourself a little bit more vulnerable to that communication, but communication is so important. And as a, as a person who's been on the receiving end of the, our, our help desk and the, the, uh, and the virtual tech bar and like all of these other things, I, I have appreciated the humanization efforts that we've undergone in the last couple of years right? You guys have put a lot of effort into making it an uh, easier interaction, right? Which means that people are more likely to go do those things. Yeah. And, and it, you know, as communication goes, when we give advanced notice, it also increased the adoption of the new technology we roll out. We could do, you know, all sorts of different communications in person, virtual tech bar, as you mentioned, um, different brown back sessions. Um, but give folks a chance to really absorb what's happening, um, let them reflect, let them ask questions, then have a realistic timeline to roll out these different technologies. Because I've seen smaller companies too, hey, we want to roll this out immediately and it's really detrimental to their, the operations of the company if you're rolling out something way too fast. I have done that. <laughs> uh, one, of my, one of my earlier roles in security, I went to this, the CEO of where I worked and I said, everyone here is an administrator, I want to take it away. He said, do it. Monday morning, we woke up. I had taken away local administrator from every user in the company, and I was on a phone for the rest of the day. Yeah. Troubleshooting my users' issues because I was a one man IT shop at the time. So. Yeah, and so that's why usually, no, we'll give that advance notice, but when we do execute the implementation of a new technology, we do it at phases at, at times, not like a big bang approach, right? Um, could we roll out YubiKeys and, and, and enforce all these new technologies that we rolled out here at SolarWinds in the past two years 
in a week? Yeah, absolutely. Is that right for the business? Probably not, right? Um, for example, we don't want to um, roll out major security initiatives um, during the you know, end of a quarter where that affects the sales teams, right? And so we have to be cognizant of what the business needs. You can secure the business, but it's still a business. It's still organizations that has to run, and we don't want to cripple or handicap um, their operations. Yeah. And with software development in particular, the number one rule with, with development security is be dis don't be disruptive. Mm. Your developers, not fans of change. <laughs> so you really need to be gentle with them as you roll these out. Give, give buffer time between giant changes. Um, and we're, we're right in the middle of that right now of kind of being a little hands off with them and letting them get to work. And, and you said about change, we have a, you know, a, all I suggest that all IT organizations have a robust change advisory board. Absolutely. That, you know, you know, when we, we schedule something on the calendar and we bring all the stakeholders in to let them know what's being changed and there's an approval process and there's notification that goes out, um, that process needs to be formalized if we're making huge production changes to an environment. So having that change advisory board, um, I know our very own RJ runs that. <laughs> and and security, security should be as big of a part of a conversation right. with that as operations. From the beginning. From, from, the from the beginning. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think that um, those overnight changes, even if it's a small, you think it's a smaller change, yeah. you don't know the it's full impact. It's like a impact. button. It really, yeah. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> done. Yeah. You, you might think it's a smaller change, but doing an overnight change without communication, without that phased approach like right. you talked about, is way more interruptive and disruptive than you might think it is because you don't work on those systems day to day, so you don't really know how it's going to impact their daily work. So taking that like phased approach, I mean, I've noticed the changes around here. I think that it's a smarter way to go. I, I do like that you brought up process being so important as well. I think that process is really important. And a lot of times in smaller companies, if they're, especially if they're not like well established or kind of newer or within the first few years, they haven't um, gotten to a point where they've had established processes. And it can be difficult to, um, to have that laid down where it's like you think about it as it's happening instead of making that plan ahead of time. And then you have to make your plans after the fact Correct. so that the next time around, you're not so reactive. And we're always learning too. We're not what we want to be. And that's why I love by working here. And you should be always continuing to improve your processes, your change advisory board. There's, you know, we're looking at dashboards and hey, did you fill out this particular form, right? Oh, how come you didn't check this box, right? Um, and so we're always evaluating what we're doing, what we're doing and how we can make it better. And you can really do that from the security perspective too. 